Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 18th February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss six topics which are very much relevant from our UBSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see a small introduction regarding the topics. Now we are going to have our discussion. So first topic it is about road safety. Actually, this road safety it is a one of the important challenge we are facing. Because of this road accidents, we are seeing there are a number of accidents that are happening in, in every year. Okay, so because of this uh, road accident, which is not only the problem for that family, but even for the government also. So you might be asking a question like, so how this road accident, it is also one challenge for the government. So whenever any person who died because of this road accident means, so that form that family will be losing like economic head of that so and so family so because of this government need to come up with some schemes especially to give support for widows okay and to give some support for that family and government need to ensure food security for all so for this that will be also increases the burden on the government as well so in this way this road safety it is not only related to that so and so family but even for the government so this article it is important from governance point of view which mainly comes in the gs paper too and next topic it is about free trade agreement between india and uae and this article which mainly gives you many dimensions regarding this free trade agreement so we are going to discuss that that is important from international relations and even we can connect this topic with economy which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 and next topic it is uh, regarding a planetary adjustment so what is this article talking about so this article which is mainly talking about we need to go for other fuels like we need to go for transition from this fossil fuels such that we can save our environment and this topic is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes at the gs paper 3 and first three topics are important from your means and next topic it is about Supreme Court lives say stay on this uh, Haryana quota for private jobs. So Haryana recently came up with one law that came into effect from January 2022. Actually this law which is mainly passed in last year in 2021 and now it came into force from January 2022. It mainly talks about 75 percentage of reservation for locals especially in private jobs right. So already you know that uh, our law and even we are discussing about that uh, from last uh, one year okay and as well you know some analysis regarding that topic as well. So now let us try to see what is the development in that topic. So this is important from your polity which mainly comes in the GS paper too. And next topic it is regarding India's first ever taxi service inaugurated in Maharashtra that is water taxi. So this is very important from our economy point of view which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. So under economy we can study this topic under infrastructure. And next topic it is regarding India again backs diplomats, uh, diplomacy at UNSC. This is United Nations Security Council. Okay so this topic it is very important from your international relations. So these are the topics now we are going to have our discussion. So let's get started with our discussion with a quote. So this quote it is by Abdul Kalam. So this quote which is mainly regarding our education. Okay, so quote says that all birds find shelter during a rain, but eagle avoids rain by flying above the clouds. Okay, so what happened here? So if you want to reach or if you want to come out of any problem or if you want to come out of any challenge, you need to think beyond that. Okay. Okay, so here all the birds they will mainly search for a shelter uh, during this rain but only this eagle it want to avoid this rain by flying over the clouds. Okay, so in this way here if you want to achieve your dreams you have to give up. Okay, it should be different than compared to other UPSC aspirants. So you should not only do hard work but even smart work. Okay, so now let's uh, let us see this first topic it is regarding road safety. So title says India has still to get a good grip on road safety. Okay, India has to still get a good grip on road safety. Actually, this article which is mainly talking about why this road safety in news. Okay, and even it is talking about some data regarding this road accidents. And it is mainly talking about ground reality. So what is happening and what are the issues? 
if you are talking about introduction it mainly says that last year while inaugurating a webinar on vehicle crashes vehicle crashes and road safety so this is the one in one webinar which mainly inaugurated last year so this inauguration or this webinar which mainly organized by MIT Art Design and Technology University Pune so in this webinar our union minister our union minister of road transport and highways he mainly targeted about this road accidents and he said that our target it is to reduce 50% of accidents and the target year is 2025 so by 2025 we need to reduce at least 50% of this road accidents and he said that by this we can achieve zero deaths due to road accident by 2030 okay so when we are focusing on this road accident and when we are trying to reduce this road accidents uh, by 2025 that is 50 percentage and by 2030 we can achieve this zero deaths uh, mainly due to this road accident so this is a target of our government and if you're talking about the ministry of road transport and highways also participated in a conference in sweden in 2020 okay actually this conference it is a third third high level global conference so this conference it is regarding global safety and achieving the global goals 2030 and in this conference also our government of india which mainly focused on the zero fatalities and target year is 2030 once again so these are the two important conferences that you can make a note and this is your data okay so in which which conferences and which which may be webinars our government came up with these statements you have to remember this and now because of this we need to focus especially on task of saving lives of people due to this uh, accidents okay so we need to focus on how to save the lives of people okay so this is the one important thing that we need to focus and if you're talking about data data regarding accidents in india in 2010 that is in 2010s united nations general assembly after considering alarming situation of road accident fatalities that is the deaths due to this road accidents and this united nations general assembly which mainly came up with a global plan okay which mainly came up with a global plan and this global plan for the debate for the decade of action <coughs> so this uh this united nations general assembly mainly came up with a global plan and this global plan it is a what is the action that should be taken in the next one decade and especially to improve the safety of this uh, road say road journey so it is mainly talking about 2011 to 2020 actually this action plan which is mainly focusing to reduce or to decrease fatalities to decrease fatalities in road accidents that is by 50 percentage by year 2020 okay so at that time in that global plan so it mainly focused on to decrease or to reduce this road accidents by 50 percent by 2020 so though a number of steps had been taken in the last decade especially to check or to prevent this road accidents so actually the statistic which is mainly published by ministry of road transport and highways which mainly shows that in 2011 the deaths were 1,42,485 and in 2019 it increased to 1,51,000 okay, so despite of taking many steps under this global plan so there was increase in of uh, access that is mainly seen, that is 1,42,000 to 1,52,000 okay so the ministry is yet to publish the data for the year 2020 but the annual publication of this national crime record bureau which mainly says that accidents deaths and suicide in india shows that about 1,33,201 deaths okay so if you are comparing with this 2019 and 2020 there was somewhat decreasing of deaths that is mainly seen so i think what might be the reason so what you are thinking so the reason here is due to this covid 19 pandemic so because of this covid 19 pandemic across the country there was a national wide lockdown which mainly imposed and even many states they went for taking certain steps mainly to control the uh, transmission of this covid 19 and that led to limited number of motor vehicles that are mainly seen on the roads okay so because of this we can see the number of accidents due to this uh, road accidents which mainly decreased so if you're talking about court interventions you need to know about two important th cases 
So Supreme Court of India mainly while hearing the petition, so this petition mainly filed by Dr. Dr. S. Rajashekaran who is an orthopedic surgeon okay and even president of Indian Orthopedic Association okay they mainly hearing the case regarding this road safety and after that hearing the case they came up with a constitution of one committee on road safety and the chairmanship was uh, by Justice K. S. Radhakrishnan okay so this may this was a one of the important committee which mainly constitution regarding the road safety on May 30th 2014 and the court on November 30, 2017, here court issued many directives with regard to road safety. For example, to constitute a state road safety council and it also talked about establishment of lead agency and to set up road safety fund and that fund can be used for development of roads and notification of the road safety action plan and even it talked about constitution of a district road safety committee and even focused on engineer engineering impo, um, improvements and even it focused on identification and rectification of black spots and adoption of traffic uh, calming measures and conducting road safety audits and acquisition of road safety equipment and establishment of trauma care centers and even road safety education especially in the school children okay school children textbooks such that they will be coming across this uh, across this road safety rules and that will be helpful for in future okay and if you're talking about ground reality what are the challenges that you are facing so first important challenge here is already we are having motor vehicle act okay already we are having motor vehicle act of 1988 so recently in 2019 some some amendments were mainly made to this motor vehicle amendments okay so through this amendments which we made this whenever any traffic violations are happening so these traffic violence are more stringent now and even so there is some punishment that is can also be seen here and if you are if you are driving a bike or a car so you might be knowing that how many challenges that your bike or that your that your vehicle has so please check your vehicle number and try to see how many challenges that are there on your vehicles okay so because nowadays this uh, traffic violence are become very very stringent and even if you are parking or no parking area also here you will be getting challenge and even if you are not wearing your helmet and next one is if you are uh, jumping the signals or anything uh, if you are also increasing the speed limit so there are many challenges that we are seeing and personally I am facing that uh, challenge as well and next one is most states most states did not increase the corresponding compounding traffic and next one is so most of the states whatever the amendments to come up by the by the center so they are not at all followed in some states and in some states they will be having their own rules and next one is the enforcement manpower so whatever the enforcement manpower that is present it is insufficient to deal with steadily increasing the volume of traffic okay so what are the traffic signals are present okay and whatever the uh, whatever the enforcement manpower that is present so it is not at all sufficient because after this covid 19 i personally saw one thing here is so there is increasing of uh, vehicle vehicles okay vehicles on the road and each and everyone they want to go in a private vehicle rather than compared to that of public transport system mainly to decrease the chances uh, to get this coronavirus and on the roads also there is an increase in the number of four wheelers that i that i personally see and next one is even the automation of the process is still it is in fancy and this automation which is mainly limited to the large cities but not all all throughout the india and next one is even we are facing inadequate funds inadequate funds for the rectification of uh, black spots and undertaking some traffic calming measures okay so we need to take some traffic calming measures and even black spots on the roads also we can see pits are there so we need to uh, to come up with some uh, some uh, redesigning and as well as to come up with uh, new road laying so it is one of the investment taking process and even we do not have proper funds and next one is most of the drivers, conductors and even other traffic in the transport companies, they do not get benefits of this unorganized sector. So I'm not talking about government cooperation, but even some private, for example, set wind. And even if you're talking about autos, auto rickshaws that are present on the road, they will come under unorganized sector. So because of this, they do not going to get any benefits from this organized sector. And next one is 
and the next one is one of the important and most challenging task here is to improve the driving skills of drivers to improve the driving skills of drivers and as well as change the casual attitude of other road users towards road safety so this is also an important challenge that we are facing so this is about this topic and let me know what is your opinion or the way forward regarding this road safety so how can we decrease this uh, deaths due to this accidents so let me know your comments in the comment box and now let us try to see the next topic so one more thing i want to say is whoever giving the good comments tomorrow i am going to say their name okay in the introduction itself okay so now let us try to see the next topic that is regarding a free trade agreement between india and uae so you know that so we are having this heavy harvest to deal with this india and uae and soon we are going to have this free trade agreement with this uae and as well uae right the title says that itching a trade line to bond beyond oil so actually you know that this ua which is mainly the one of the country of this gcc that is gulf cooperation council and it is one of the arab country which is very much rich in this oil reserves so this article says that so whenever we are having this free trade agreement so it should not only regarding this oil but even that should be beyond the oil so this is the one idea author want to say so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so india has embarked on a new journey okay india has embarked and on a new journey uh, so it has come up with a new free trade agreement it is coming up with a new free trade agreement journey okay and it is mainly going for the renewal and with the new deal we are having new free trade agreements so india approach towards this free trade agreement now it is mainly focusing on gaining the meaningful market access so we are mainly focusing to get market access and we need to facilitate india's industries integration to the global value chains okay so we are focusing on this market access and even we are focusing on this global value chains as well so in this context union minister of commerce and industry okay in this context union minister of commerce and industry has repeatedly emphasized that india would no longer be signing trade agreements just to do join a group but the new approach of fta negotiations would respond to need the new new emerging dynamics in the international trade and the indian economy so now our government of india that is union minister of commerce and industry is mainly focusing that india no longer signing this uh, trade agreements Uh, to join a group but we are coming with the new approach okay so new approach regarding this free trade agreements it is mainly focusing on what are the challenges that we are going to face in this uh, new emerging dynamics and we need to come across uh, come or align with the this uh, new emerging dynamics regarding international trade and even in the indian economy so we are talking about in which areas we are mainly going to focus So under this revamped free trade strategy government of india has prioritized at least six countries okay at least six countries out of that the first one is uae and other countries includes uk european union australia canada israel so these are the some of the countries which are also the part of this gcc gulf cooperation council and now we are going to have this early harvest agreement and in soon okay soon we are going to have this treaty agreement with uae and if you are talking about importance of uae already you know that united arab emirates has emerged as an important economic hub okay and it is very very helpful for to reach this west asian countries of middle east countries and uae due to its strategic location it also emerged as an important economic center of the world so uae it is also one of the important economic center in the world and the recent years uae also came up with this vision 2021 okay and in this vision 2021 it want to diversify its economy that means they are mainly dependent upon this crude oil natural gas etc but if you are talking about this climate change which is mainly caused because of this fossil fuels so many a countries and we all know that we already signed this paris climate deal right so because of this we need to decrease this carbon dioxide emissions so how can we decrease this carbon dioxide emissions we need to go for using of renewable energy rather than this fossil fuels right so whenever any country which is dependent upon this fossil fuels means so in future what happen there will be some problem that can be seen 
uh, for this country because many countries are mainly moving towards this carbon neutrality and india's target is to attain this carbon neutrality by 2070 and even china to 2060 and other developed countries it mainly says that by 2050 we are going to achieve this carbon neutrality so here whenever any country want to sustain should not depend upon the only one thing okay for example if any country which is dependent upon this oil means so if any country other countries are mainly shifting away from the oil and they want to go for any alternative means so the economy of this country will be uh, country will be collapsed so because of this uae recently came up with this vision 2021 and it want to focus on the diversifying of its economy and even since 2012 so according to this wto world trade organization document by this non-hydrocarbon sectors which mainly reflecting the successful diversification of the country okay it is also mainly focusing on successful diversification of the economy of that country and although if you're talking about this uae already had a diverse okay diversified its economy and mainly wants to move from hydrocarbon based economy towards service sector and as well as manufacturing sector and it is also focusing on this financial services wholesale and retail trade, real estates, business services, etc. So these will be some important contributors if it want to move towards away from this uh, hydrocarbon sector. That is, if it want to diversify its economy, it mainly focus on, uh, it mainly do focus on the services, manufacturing. So these will be some main contributors of the economy. And if you're talking about trade and investment data, as India and UAE strive to further deepen the trade and as well as investment ties, they mainly announced this early harvest agreement, right? India and UAE total trade, that is merchandise trade, it is like $52.76 billion for the first nine months in the fiscal year 21 to 2022. So between this fiscal year 2021 to 2022, see here the merchandise trade here is about $52.76 billion. And actually you know that UAE, it is India's third largest trading partner as well. And if you're talking about aim, aim it is to boost bilateral merchandise trade to above US dollars 100 billion. So the target here is to increase the trade to dollar 100 billion. And the trade agreement, it is also one of the important enabler for two day investment flows as well. And UAE's investment in India is estimated around dollars 11.67 billion. So if you're talking about so how it will be like an export springboard so whenever india which is mainly going to sign this fta or whenever we are going to uh, achieve or whenever we are having an aim mainly to achieve our target of 1 trillion of merchandise exports so we need to go for free trade agreements that will be helpful to achieve our aims to reach so and so amount of this merchandise exports and this free trade agreement with the uae will pave the way for india to enter into this UAE strategic location and it also having a very relatively easy access to African market as well okay so whenever we are going this FTAs which will be also helpful for supply chain okay supply chain especially regarding hand looms handicrafts textiles and as well as pharma products so this is a gist of this topic and I hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is regarding a planetary adjustment so actually this article which is mainly talking about we need to transit okay we need to prioritize a transition to energy sources here and we need to maintain the natural balance so this article is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 and this topic it is exclusively important from your mains now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you're talking about introduction so why it is in use our Prime Minister in, in his first address this year, it is mainly focused on the theme of environment. Okay, so this year first address of Prime Minister regarding the theme of environment. So this address which mainly remarked that it, it was not the planet that was fragile, but the people and their commitments to conserve the nature. Okay. So here our Prime Minister says that what of the planet that is present now, it is not at all fragile, but what are the actions that you are doing and what are the commitments you are having regarding the conservation of nature, so that is a matter of concern. So not only this, even James Lovelock Gallia uh, Gaia hypothesis till Nobel laureate Paul Cruston 
so these people mainly said that so whenever whenever there is any chemical effluents that are entering into our atmosphere so that will be causing this climate change related impacts here okay so here planet it is not at all fragile so whatever the actions that are doing by the people so that is leading to the harm for this planet and that will be leading to some drastical climate change events so we are talking about agriculture so we are doing agriculture especially for mainly food security so to maintain the food security of the country here man they are mainly going for agriculture so here if you are talking about agriculture so this agriculture which is mainly dominated by wheat and as well as rice so what might be the reason that is msp minimum support price so this will comes under our in economy right so in agriculture it is mainly dominated by this rice and as well as wheat as food crops and whenever we want to go for increase our cultivation and to ensure food sec food security here so here clearing of forest tracks are happening and large major scale changes to the global global climate that is happening because of this clearing of forest or deforestation so whenever we are going for deforestation whenever we are going for the clearing of the lands that is having some uh, negative impact on our climate change as well and even we are facing some atmospheric changes due to the industrial age and as well as use of fossil fuels so because of use of fossil fuels and as well as whenever we are going for industrialization that will be releasing lot of amount of this greenhouse gases into atmosphere so because of this greenhouse gases we are seeing global warming is happening so because of this global warming we can see some atmospheric changes that are mainly happening okay so what are the evident what are the proof so already you know that in last year in uttarakhand we saw avalanche avalanche of rock and ice which mainly destroyed two power projects and that also led to the deaths of lot of people who are working in that power projects or sorry in that dams which are mainly present there and if you are talking about geology of himalayas we know that they are very much active okay they are mainly a uh, folded mountains and they are very very active and they are in mountains and whenever you want to go for any project here so many scientists many environmentalists they mainly warned warned that so this region it is ecologically very sensitive whenever we are going for construction of any project it will be not sustainable so if we are talking about india's position regarding this climate justice it cannot be denied the right to rely on polluting fossil fuel but it is mainly focusing on limited access to this reliable energy so here because of this we can see in india we are mainly continuing the use of this uh, coal uh, fire plants and even we are going for uh, cutting of forests that is deforestation okay etc so india's commitment to net zero is set decades into the future at 2070 so already you know that in recent cop 26 conference of parties 20 speaks uh so here our prime minister came up with a statement that india it is going to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070 so in this context what is the need the need here is we need to accelerate and we need to prioritize the transition to energy sources okay we need to go for searching for the alternate sources such that we can save our planet so this is just of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is regarding haryana quota for private jobs supreme court lifts stay on haryana quota for private jobs so i think you might be knowing what is the background so haryana government came up with a law that 75 percentage of jobs uh, reservation should be there for the locals in the private jobs right so this case went to high court and high court gave the stay and finally this case went for appeal to the supreme court and supreme court now it mainly lifts the ban lifts the stay on this haryana quota for private jobs So now let us try to understand this topic. So this topic it is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper two. And now let us try to see context. So Supreme Court set aside a Punjab Haryana High Court order. Okay, so this Punjab Haryana High Court order, which mainly gave stay for this controversial state law, and this state law which mainly provides seventy five percentage of reservation for the local youth in private sector jobs. which are mainly paying less than 30000 rupees per month so now let us try to see some details of this law so this law which mainly requires a firm with 10 or more employees so if there is any firm which is present or any company which is present which mainly employed 
10 or more employees they need to reserve 75 percentage of all the jobs and these jobs which mainly offers less than 30,000 rupees per month okay for the local people and the jobs will provided in the various companies even societies trust and limited liability partnership firms that is LLPs okay and this one is the move mainly aimed at disallowing the influx of talent from the other parts of country even in the sections in the sectors like IT, IT enabled services which the state does not enough uh, does not have enough capacity uh, supply okay so this is this is one of the important move which mainly this allows the influx of the ta talent from other parts of the country to enter into this sector for example if there is any company which mainly established in this uh, let us see let us see in haryana so this uh, uh, this law which mainly says that 75 percentage of the people they should be from that locals that is 75 percent reservation and rest 25 percent you can get okay so because of this here if at all any other persons who want to come from other states who are the talented persons so they do not allow this and next one is this law it is applicable for the period of 10 years and this law which mainly makes mandatory for all these employers to register all their employees drawing gross monthly salary or wages not more than this 30,000 on designated portal available okay so here because of this law which mainly says it should be like it is a mandatory like so all employers they need to register all their employees drawing gross monthly salary which is less than 30,000 per month and if there is any violation there will be the punishment that is seen okay so these are the some important facts that you need to remember regarding this act and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding india again backs diplomacy at unsc that is united nations security council so i want to give you a small homework so please refer some facts regarding this united nations security council and let me know how many members are present in this united nations security council along with the names of the countries now so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So this is important from your GS paper to under international relations. So if you are talking about context it mainly says that at a meeting, at a meeting in this United Nations Security Council, okay, at a meeting at this United Nations Security Council, so which mainly called by Russia to discuss Ukraine crisis, okay. So the meeting in this United Nations Security Council which mainly called by Russia to discuss this Ukraine crisis on the 7th anniversary of this Minsk 7, Minsk 2 ceasefire agreement. So it is the 7th, okay, 7th anniversary of this Minsk 2 agreement. So in this uh, 7th anniversary Russia mainly uh, called uh, mainly to discuss this uh, Ukraine issue. So here we need to focus on this Minsk agreement because it is 7th anniversary. So there are high probability of getting questions regarding this Minsk 2 in your mains and even in your prelims. So if you see some details, it mainly says that India has been in touch with all concerned parties. It is our concerned view that issue can only be resolved through this diplomatic dialogue. So already we know that across this Ukraine and as well as Russia, so there were some tensions that is mainly going on and these tensions that can be resolved through this diplomatic dialogue. And India is mainly trying to balance its interest given its strong relationship with both the US and as well as Russia. So we're talking about India. India want to come up with a balance of interest here because uh, USA is also important and even Russia is also important for India. And US president mainly said that Russia could invade Ukraine within the next few days. Okay, so because of this, we need to take some steps. So actually this means to agreement which mainly signed by Russia, Ukraine and separatist leaders in organization of security and cooperation in Europe that is OSCE. OSCE, Russia and Ukraine, they mainly signed this uh, Minsk 2 agreement and this Minsk 2, it, it is not even fully implemented. So, we are talking about some facts regarding this Minsk 2. In 2015, in 2015, an open conflict, okay, open conflict that led to this Minsk 2 agreement and it is a mediation, okay, this mediation which is mainly done by France and as well as Germany. And it was designated to end the fighting in the in the rebel regions and even to hand over the broader to Ukraine's national troops. Okay, it was also designated to end the fighting in the rebel regions and even to hand over the border border to Ukraine national troops. And it was also signed by representatives of Russia, 
Ukraine and OSE. So this is very very important films fact. And as you all know, this OSE, OSCE, it is one of the world's largest security-oriented intergovernmental organization. It is not government; it is intergovernmental organization, and it mainly mandates on the issues regarding arms control, promotion of human rights, and even freedom of press and free elections. So this is the gist of this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding water taxi service. So it is a first. It is the first water taxi. So you might have uh, come across this taxi service on the road, right? So I think you might be knowing about what is this Ola, Uber. Okay, so there are different things. I think you might be knowing much more better than me, okay? Because I am not using uh, that Ola and uh, that Uber. Okay, so I think you know about the basic idea regarding Uber. You are going to open the app and you are going to book, uh, book, uh, book that cab, and you will be giving you the pickup place and as well as destination place. And such that they will be giving you how much amount they are charging, and you have to pay, right? So this is the taxi normally. So this is talking about water taxi, and now let us try to understand how this water taxi is different from this Ola or Uber. Okay, so what will be the advantages and what will be the applications? So this article it is important from economy from infrastructure point of view. So if you see context, it mainly says that India's first water taxi service. Okay. India's first water taxi service was inaugurated in Maharashtra, which mainly connects Navy Mumbai to the mainland Mumbai. So, where it is mainly connecting Navy Mumbai to mainland Mumbai. So, if you see details, it mainly says that the newly inaugurated waterway will connect the water taxi service with Belapur, Nirul, Elephanta Islands. Okay. So, the newly inaugurated waterway will connect the water taxi service. With Belapur, Nerul, and as well as Elephanta Islands. So for the first time, Mumbai and Navy Mumbai will be linked by a dependable and fast transportation services. Okay, so whenever we are having tra fast transportation services, that will be helpful to reduce the traveling time as well. So what is this water taxi? Water taxi is nothing but water bus or a water taxi. It is a, it is a type of water craft. Okay, it is a type of water craft. That is mainly used to provide public or private transportation. It is mainly focusing on public or private transportation in the urban areas, and this service may be planned with multiple stops. Okay, it will it will be mainly having some multiple stops similar to that of bus or available on demand to many locations. It is like similar to the taxi. Okay, in the taxi also will be having several destination locations. Right, in the same way, it is also going to have some multiple stops as well. So the first known water taxi began operating around the area, which later became known as Manchester, England. So for the first time, so we came up with this water taxi. It is also known as Manchester, England. So now in India, we are having this first water taxi in Maharashtra. And here you need to know about some more facts regarding the Sagar Mala program as well. So what is the Sagar Mala? Sagar Mala it is mainly focusing on improving of country's logistic industry. So logistic means nothing but uh, if you are taking any place, it will be very much famous for packing, grading, storage, all these facilities that will be present at a one place that is called as logistics, right? So India's government it is mainly focusing to improve this uh, country's logistic industry, and the program mainly aims to maximize potential of coastlines and the rivers in order to reduce the amount of infrastructure. Needed to fulfill the logistic goals in the nation, and this program is Ministry of Shipping flagship initiative, and they are mainly focusing to promote development in India by utilizing the country's seven thousand five hundred and seventeen kilometers of coastline, and is also focusing on fourteen thousand five hundred kilometers network of navigable waterways as well, and the initiative process. Initiative proposes to improve nation's port, and even it is mainly focusing on shoreline development, and that will be mainly contributing to our country's economy. An important aim it is to transform the existing ports to modern, world-class facilities, and we can go for integrating the development. We can go for integrating the development of industrial clusters, ports with efficient evacuation systems. Uh, for example, we can go for railways, roadways, coastal, and as well as inland waterways, etc. So, in this way, here this uh, water taxi is one of the initiative that will be helpful for this saga mala as well. And now, let us try to see the next topic. It is regarding India UAE to sign trade pact today. So, this article which is mainly talking about India UAE 
bilateral free trade agreement okay india will sign first ever a bilateral free trade agreement between the two nations okay on on today okay so this is a uh, thing and already we discussed about this article in the second topic right and now let us try to see the explanation part for yesterday's questions so first question is regarding ecological pyramids so in this ecological pyramids we will be having three types of pyramids pyramids of number so we are mainly drawing this pyramids based on the number like this and this one is pyramid of biomass so based on the biomass biomass means we are collecting so and so thing and we will be drying up and after drying up whenever we are weighing that that is called as a biomass and this one is pyramid of energy so how much energy that is transmitted from one animal that is a one animal to another animal in the food chain that will comes under this pyramid of energy so first statement is grassland in the forest ecosystem they will be having pyramid of numbers similar pyramid of numbers but it will be not happening so in the grasslands we can see so the grass which is a very very large number but in the forest ecosystem we will be having the less number of trees right so this statement is absolutely incorrect so you can eliminate this first statement and second one is pyramid of biomass is the most accurate among the three ecological pyramids okay pyramids number and as well as uh, in this three pyramids it is not at all like an accurate so you can also eliminate this second statement so the statement is here only three that is the pyramid of energy always upright that means whenever uh, whenever the energy which is mainly transmitted from one animal to any, any other animal so there is a decreasing of energy that mainly transmitted so here this three option three is only correct so correct option is four and next uh, question it is regarding secondary succession so in succession we will be having two types of succession primary succession and secondary succession so what is the secondary succession i will be giving you one example to understand the concept of this secondary succession for example let us take this is a forest that is present so because of forest fire what happened let us take this area had been entered into this forest fires affected with this forest fires and what are the plants that is present that become ashes here and later on after some years we can see the small plants will be growing here and finally there will be the big forest that will be appeared after some years so this forest it is called as secondary succession Okay, now let us try to see the some examples of the secondary succession. So this is very important from your prelims point of view. So first one is the formation of island after volcanic eruption. Okay, after volcanic eruption, and next one is the renewal of the renewal of the forest after fire. Yes, and this one is a flooded land, and this one is renewal of a crop after harvesting. Yes, all these mainly comes answer is here is for all. And now let us try to see the today's questions. So before seeing today's questions, I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathor's IS, we are providing number of courses like prelims test series, mains answer writing course, and even full foundational course. And we also provide you individual modules as well. So this prelims test series is very very useful because here we are providing thirty test, which mainly includes both uh, GS and as well as CSAT. And this mains answer writing course that I say personally, it is very very beneficial. Because mains will be the deciding factor whether your name will be there in the final list or not. Okay, so here the some mains answering course very very useful because within one year we plan in such a way that we will be giving you weekly targets such that it will be not at all burden for you people. And on this weekly targets daily one question will be given. There will be evaluation and even one to one mentorship is there. And we also provide you the model answer for that so and so question. And even on sunday there will be essay or case study practice so in this way this course it is very very useful to improve your answer writing scores answer writing uh, skills and if you are a beginner or even after, even you gave some attempts in upsc this course is absolutely beneficial and the new batch for this mains answer writing course are going to be started in the first week of march so if you are interested so please try to join this course it is very very beneficial and apart from that for 2023 we also launched the full foundational course for upsc and here we are providing like more than 700 hours of video lectures so this will be very very beneficial and we are focusing on the we are focusing on this concept of clarity because the recent trends of upsc had been changed because it is mainly focusing on concepts rather than rather than the facts and here we are going to cover each and every single sub topic of your syllabus that will be ensured here and if you don't want to take entire foundation course but if you are weak in so on the subject like economy history geography science and technology environment and ecology you can take individual courses also 
okay so the prices of this course are very much affordable and you can't get this much low prices anywhere with quality of content so even i can assure you that if you have a zero knowledge regarding so and so topic or so and so subject so after watching this uh, videos you will be getting at least 90 to 95 percentage of conceptual clarity for sure okay so this is about these courses and these courses that you can you can see in our website so the link of our website is given in description box if you're entering uh, to our website for the first time you have to register with your email id and after that you can watch demo videos in each and every module okay and if you want to talk to me directly you can call to this number 8074765513 and if you want to download the app of rathor's is the link is also given in the description box you can download that and today's questions are mainly based on concentration of oxygen that gets doubled in atmosphere so what can be the possible effects okay so what is the possible effects whenever the oxygen concentration is doubling in the atmosphere and next one is the ecological footprint is a measure of human demand on earth ecosystem it mainly measures it is about ecological footprint so these are the two questions try to give your answer in the comment box and what are the homework i'm saying so please try to do that homework on that day and please give your way forward regarding road accidents and tomorrow's lecture i will be announcing the name of the person who is giving the good way forward okay so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to these courses thank you so much